As most of you are aware of, Russia has officially invaded and began a large-scale invasion of Ukraine. Several people are dead now, at least last time I checked, 50-plus people have been killed through uh, airstrikes and uh, battles occurring throughout the Ukraine. And I want to say this right now, my thoughts are with uh, all the people of Ukraine, and I hope that this situation is resolved soon. So it started with a, a buildup of troops along the Russian-Ukrainian border, and even though there have been several Western countries that have been trying to persuade uh, the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, not to attack the Ukraine. They even said, hey, we're going to impose sanctions on you. We're going to do this, this and this. There have been diplomatic efforts on behalf of uh, President Biden, uh, the uh, prime minister of the United Kingdom, Boris Johnson, as well as the UN, the EU, in order to try and discourage Russia from attacking uh, Ukraine. Unfortunately, all those attempts have failed and Russia is now attacking the entire country of Ukraine. Initially, Putin claimed that it was going to be about this region of Ukraine that he was going after, which is allegedly claimed by uh, pro-Russian separatists. And he was using some sort of excuse like, oh, we're going to go in and denazify this region because, according to Putin, it's controlled by neo-Nazis or, or something. And so he was going to go in and, quote unquote, stop a genocide that's happening. But my question is to uh, President Putin is if this is the region you wish to uh, liberate from genocide and so-called uh, neo-Nazis, then why are you moving troops throughout all of Ukraine. Why are you landing troops by Odessa and Maripol? Or why are you attacking uh, Kharkiv and uh, Kiev when, like, this is supposed to be your uh, military operation here? And what's sad is, of course, Putin has almost full control over the Russian Federation. He's basically a dictator. And the Russian parliament signed off on this a few days ago. And uh, unfortunately, I, I feel like that this could very well escalate further beyond the Ukraine. So according to the New York Times, I got a couple different maps that we can go back and forth between real quick. Uh, this is from BBC.com. I'll put both uh, New York Times and BBC.com uh, link below in the description section just to give you an idea of what's been uh, hit so far. Allegedly, there's troops moving in from Belarus. So I guess Belarus is allied with Russia or else they just don't want to be invaded by Russia. They're not part of NATO. And so I don't know where I think they may be coming in this way. But, you know, I have troops running in from here and moving in throughout, uh, you know, the Black Sea because you have the Russian fleet here. They've already annexed uh, Crimea back in 2014. A lot of you are aware of that. And so uh, Russian troops have I think some troops have landed here and here and there have been airstrikes. I think ballistic missiles have been used. Not nuclear, but missiles like cruise missiles and whatnot have been hitting like airports, uh, military bases in the Ukraine. And uh, see, Russia claims it has destroyed more than 70 military targets. There's also claims on the Ukrainian sides that a, a platoon has been captured that didn't even know they were being sent into the Ukraine to kill Ukrainians. So there is some confusion on the ground. And, uh, you know, not all the information can be verified. There are claims that between one to five Russian planes have been destroyed, at least one helicopter destroyed. These are Russian planes and helicopters have been destroyed. But so far, the loss of life is unacceptable. And unfortunately, a lot more lives are going to be lost before this uh, is over. And it seems pretty apparent to me that this region of the Ukraine is not uh, Putin's true focus. This was his excuse, his justification for launching the quote unquote special military operation. But once again, if, if this is your only focus, Putin, then why are you attacking the rest of the Ukraine? Why are you moving troops towards its capital of Kiev? Why are you launching tri strikes all the way out to the, the Western regions of the Ukraine? Why are you trying to take control of Ukraine's ports? It's obvious to me that Russia is attempting to take control of the whole country lock, stock and barrel. And you have a lot of countries right now, including organizations like NATO, condemning this. You have the European Union and the UN condemning this as well. And here's another map on Twitter, which shows uh, the NATO countries, 
These are all NATO countries. And once again, Belarus. I don't know if Belarus is actually allied with Russia or maybe they're neutral, similar to Sweden, and maybe they're friendly to Russia. I don't know exactly. But the point is there have been troops that have gone through Belarus into the Ukraine from Russia. I don't know if this number is exactly accurate. I thought there was like 200,000 Russian troops on the border. But you obviously have NATO uh, countries over here with NATO troops lining up on the border along with U.S. troops as well, you know, from Poland to Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia. And they've all, I think they've all come out and they have condemned what Russia is doing as well. And that's pretty brave of Estonia as well as Latvia and Lithuania because they, they border Russia. And this little chunk of land right here is Russian, by the way, along the Baltic Sea. And so them speaking out against Russia is pretty brave on their part. And a whole bunch of countries in the European Union and NATO have spoke out, including uh, Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister of the European, of, uh, I mean, the United Kingdom. You also have the UN that has spoken out. You also have uh, President Biden. He's going to uh, make a speech later today. And apparently there's going to be uh, sanctions imposed against uh, Vladimir Putin and uh, members of the Russian parliament. Anyone that, I guess, voted in favor of these military actions by Russia. So... You have a lot of push around the West, at least the West with European Union, United Kingdom, U.S., etc., that are going to impose sanctions. I don't know how strict those sanctions are going to be, but here's something I want to discuss is if Russia felt threatened at all by these sanctions, which had already been brought up in previous uh, diplomatic attempts by Biden, Johnson, the European Union, United Nations, they, they've come out for weeks saying, hey, if you if you attack Ukraine, if you invade Ukraine, we're going to do this, this, this and this. They've made it pretty clear the sanctions they're going to impose on Russia. If that was deterrent enough, Russia would not be doing this. So obviously, Putin doesn't give a damn about these sanctions. He doesn't care that uh, the European Union, that the UN, that the US, that the UK and other nations are going to impose sanctions against Russia. He's trying to justify it in his own mind why he believes that he is right to invade Ukraine. And at first he's like, oh, well, we're just going to go into eastern Ukraine. And he recognized two of these uh, regions as independent. But he's taken it a step further than those two regions, even though that's still a bit extreme, in my opinion. He's just going a step further from those two simple regions to the rest of the Ukraine. And I think in Putin's mind, from what I've seen some, from some of his speeches, he's of the opinion that Ukraine shouldn't be a country anyways, that it should still be part of Russia. And we know that uh, Crimea has been annexed years ago, back in 2014, and that was probably just uh, the first of many steps that uh, Putin has uh, had his uh, ambitions on when it comes to uh, other uh, former Soviet Union states. So I don't know if this is going to escalate any further. I sincerely hope not. There have been reports of senior officials in Russia, I think 150. Let me find that article. I think it was posted in my Discord that are actually coming out uh, condemning uh, what Putin has done. This is from the uh, Daily Mail. I'll link this below in the description section as well. And for, for more information, obviously there's news sources out there that you should go to. I would highly recommend uh, what Sky News. I've been watching a lot of Sky News' live streams. So I think they've done a pretty stellar job in covering this uh, compared to American news sites. I just don't trust American news sites, and I hate to say that, but I don't trust CNN. I don't trust MSNBC, and I don't trust Fox News. I don't trust any of them. I really don't. So I'd rather just uh, watch Sky News or some other organization, even though you can trust them as far as you can throw them as well. But this, according to DailyMail.com, more than 150 senior Russian officials have signed an open letter condemning Putin's invasion of Ukraine as unprecedented atrocity and warn. There's some freaking pop-up ads. It's ridiculous. But let's see, they warn that the catastrophic consequences while urging citizens not to participate. Over 150 municipal officials have signed an open letter condemning Vladimir Putin. War and invasion is unprecedented atrocity. There's no justification. Russia has invaded Ukraine in a series of attacks. So this is actually, in my opinion, pretty brave from like senior officials in Russia, especially since for all intents and purposes, Russia is basically a, a democracy in name only. They have some freedoms and liberties, but very, very limited 
And that limitation is based off what their president, Vladimir Putin, uh, generously allows the Russian people to have. Do they have more freedoms and liberties in the Russian Federation than the Soviet Union? Yeah. But at the same time, all intents and purposes, uh, Putin is a dictator. He is their ruler. He might as well be their czar, right? So unfortunately, you have this situation happening, escalating quickly, where Russia is invading the Ukraine. Not just this, these small two regions in eastern Ukraine, but the entire nation of the Ukraine as well. And a lot of people in the Ukraine are obviously afraid right now. Lives have been lost and people are, you know, trying to get as much money out of their bank accounts as possible. They're trying to flee west. There's a refugee crisis is happening. I think they're trying to flee to Slovakia and these other countries and like Poland. So you have a lot of Ukrainians right now in highways, like lines and lines of traffic fleeing west. But unfortunately, there's strikes that are happening in the west of Ukraine as well. The central Ukraine, west Ukraine, east Ukraine, down here in the, in the Black Sea. It, it's happening everywhere. It's an all-out invasion by Russia. And my concern is that these sanctions don't really matter to Putin. They're not going to stop Putin from doing what he's doing. The only hope is that maybe the Russian people, would, it seems like, I mean, it's hard to tell, but there's obviously probably a large percentage of the Russian population that don't want this war. They don't want to see their sons and daughters sent off to Ukraine to, to kill Ukrainians and to die. I don't think the majority of the Russian population wants this war either. But you have to wonder how long has uh, Russia been under the Putin regime and how many people in Russia are loyal to Putin to whatever end. So that is a concern as well. And if by some freak accident, one of the NATO countries get hit, like Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Slovakia, etc. If one of these countries get hit by a Russian missile, or any like citizens in these countries get hit by an airstrike from Russia, it could spark uh, an entire war, a full-fledged European war, or a third world war. That's another concern that a lot of people have, because the one of the um, sayings that NATO has is an attack on one nation of NATO is an attack on all nations of NATO. So say if Estonia is attacked, then all of NATO are going to declare war on Russia. doesn't matter if it's Estonia, Slovakia, Czech Republic, Germany, France, the United Kingdom, Poland, all members of, Na of NATO, you know, have a pact and that includes the United States and attack on one is attack on all of them. So there's, potential for this conflict that's happening in uh, the Ukraine to escalate even further beyond Ukraine itself. And you also have to be concerned about what's happening with China because there's reports right now that China might be preparing uh, an invasion of Taiwan. And if that happens, then you have to ask yourself the question, is this simply a coordinated uh, attacks by Russia and China because Russia's BFF right now is China. And China has its own ambitions, you know, invading uh, Taiwan and continuing to oppress the people of Hong Kong, as well as the Uyghur population and a few other groups as well. So we'll see how this plays out. I hope that the situation de-escalates. I seriously doubt it at this point because there's been weeks of buildup on the border of Ukraine between Russia with hundreds of thousands of Russian troops. I think 190, 200,000, maybe more coming more military hardware as well. And Ukrainian people do have a military, but their, their military is nowhere near the size of Russia's. But we are supplying Ukraine with military hardware and ammo. And there's probably going to be humanitarian stuff as well sent to the Ukraine and to refugees that are fleeing the war zone. But whether or not this situation is resolved, I honestly don't know, because there have been diplomatic attempts by many different parties to prevent this from happening. Yet, for some reason, Putin is hell-bent on invading Ukraine. And you have to ask yourself the question, is it going to stop with Ukraine? Or is he going to go up into Belarus, which seems to be playing neutrality? Or they're Russian-friendly? I don't know exactly where B Belarus stands. All I know is that they're not part of NATO. And the Ukraine has been trying to you know, become members of NATO because they were afraid that this would eventually happen. And unfortunately, it is occurring right now with the people of Ukraine. So it could you know, end in the Ukraine, 
May it'll be over in a few hours. Maybe the Russian troops will pull back. That's best case scenario. But still, there's going to be a lot of destruction. There's already a lot of death that has occurred. And a lot of people in the Ukraine are fleeing for their lives. And even if these sanctions are imposed by the European Union, United Nations, the United Kingdom, the U.S., it's still going to hurt the entire world because we're all connected together globally and economically. And it could lead us towards... uh, new depression it's going to cause prices to rise fuel prices food prices etc and it's very unfortunate for what's happening to the people of the ukraine and like i said my thoughts are with all the people of the ukraine right now including another fellow uh content creator pvp cat he's from the ukraine uh fortunately uh him and most of his family i believe have fled the ukraine and he's hoping for his wife to get out of the Ukraine. I think she's trying to get a flight out of there. So my thoughts are with PVP Cat right now. He also does uh, Red Dead content. And obviously, I do Red Dead content on the gaming channel. I think most of you are aware of that. But I hope that this doesn't escalate into a European or a global world war. But my concern is it's very similar to the Great War. It's an alliance of nations situation. And it's a domino effect. If one of these NATO countries are intentionally or unintentionally attacked by Russia and lives are lost in some of these NATO countries, then NATO may respond accordingly. There's already been calls by the Ukrainians for NATO to impose a no-flight zone over uh, the Ukraine in the hopes of stopping Russian air force and Russian jets and attack helicopters from flying over the Ukraine. If NATO does have a no-fly zone over the Ukraine, that means that they're going to have to put planes in the air over the skies of the Ukraine. And that means that there's going to be potential conflict between NATO planes and Russian planes. And if that happens, and if those two planes start fighting and dogfighting in the skies above Ukraine, then that will spark a European war at the very least, perhaps even a global third world war. Some people, including myself, are concerned that this is perhaps the beginning of a third world war. I hope that's not the case. I sincerely hope it's not. But I guess our only hope right now is that maybe enough people in Russia begin protesting across St. Petersburg, Moscow, various other uh, big cities of Russia, maybe small towns in Russia, and protest against uh, Putin's war on the Ukrainian people because there is a history between the Ukrainian people and the Russian people. They do share some history, and there are families on both sides of the border. You know, there's probably friendships on both sides of the border. But I think that that's what it has to come down to at the moment. The, the Russian people have to stand up and they have to say enough is enough. And maybe they will. Maybe they'll stand up and they'll show the world that they do not support what Vladimir Putin's doing. And maybe we'll start to see massive protests happening in the streets of Moscow, St. Petersburg, and throughout the rest of Russia. I hope that that's the case. And maybe, you know, more and more people in Russia that have positions of power, whether they were appointed there by Putin or they got there legitimately, will grow a spine and they'll openly begin to speak out against Putin as well. Unfortunately, I seriously doubt it because Putin has control over most of the Russian Federation. He has for a long time now. And that's going to be difficult because a lot of his lackeys are in charge and in control of all the uh, various uh, departments and ministries of the Russian government and uh, the Duma, you know, the Russian parliament is practically, you know, Putin's parliament. I mean, those most of those uh, officials, those elected officials, those members of his parliament are, are Russian, are p- pro-Putin, you know. So I really don't know how this is going to play out. But I'll, I'll uh, continue to share my thoughts as this continues to progress. But like I said, if you want more information, there's plenty of uh, news sites out there covering this. I've been watching uh, Sky News. Uh, I started watching it last night with Riley when it started really kicking off. And I'm going to continue to keep an eye on it. And I hope that this situation does soon get resolved, but I fear that that's not going to be the case. Even if the West does impose their sanctions, even if they do try to freeze uh, Russian banks and uh, anyone else involved in Russia with this war within you know the hierarchy of the Russian Federation, including Putin, I just don't think that Putin cares. I think that Putin is hell-bent on uh, continuing with the invasion of Ukraine And who knows where Putin will stop with his uh, invasion. He may decide to take up and go after other former former nations that were part of the Soviet Union. Who knows what's on Putin's mind right now, except for the eyes that he has gazed upon the nation of Ukraine. 
not just the uh, East, not just this, but all this is under attack right now by Putin. Once again, my thoughts are with the people of Ukraine and hopefully, just hopefully, the situation will come to an end sooner rather than later. But my personal concern as somebody that is familiar with the history and how it can repeat itself is it could very well be the opening salvo of a much larger war, whether or not it's simply a, a regional war, a European war, or perhaps even a full-fledged third world war. Your thoughts, your views, your opinion regarding the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And do you think that it will escalate or do you think it will de-escalate? As always, welcome below in the comment section.